Hello there. Are you looking for environment related dashboard design inspiration? Then here are five dashboard designs that will going to help you in your next project. And if you want to learn how you can create such dashboards, then you can join my advanced W dashboard training. With that, let me take you to these inspirational dashboards. So here is the first dashboard which is created by Julia Borsi and this is the Medard Day dashboard and as you can see the design is quite stunning right and here is the information about what exactly is the Medard Day and that's written over here according to folk metrology if it rains on Saint Medard Day the 8th of June, it will going to rain for next 40 days as well. Otherwise, drought is expected, right? So based on this folk meteorology, the visualization was created. And they are saying with the help of this data, how accurate was this prediction in last 100 years in Budapest, right? So what does legend mean? Well, if you have this dark blue, then rained on Midar day and if it is a lighter one then did not rain on Midar day. So clearly as you can see this indicates that it did not rain on Midar day but over here you know these big spikes basically indicating that rain on Midar day right. So the length of the bar which is this length as you can see the line is going the length of the bar chart represent the amount of rain fell after Midar day in that particular year right as an example they have given for example over here uh, oops sorry for example 275.55 mm of rain fell after midar day in 1999 right so this information is something which is visible and over here i don't know if you can see but let me just expand 1922, 1997, 1972, 1947. That's how the four bifurcation is given, just to give them a give user a high level idea about what section they are looking at. Also, over here, each dot, which is which you can see these dots, right? Each dot represents a day after Midart day, starting from the middle with the size showing the amount of rain. So that basically higher the dot, that means higher the amount of rain. So that's a quite interesting visualization uh, which I really liked and I thought I will share with you. Also down below some legend which is average number of rain days after Midar day. 13 days it did not rain on Midar and 14 is like rain on Midar day. So average number of day, rainy days after Midar day is what it is indicating. Then this is a conclusion. The popular folk observation is not supported by the data over here, as you can see. Um, however, it's worth mentioning that June was seen the highest level of rainfall based on this chart, right? Highest le level of rainfall in the average of last 100 years. So this chart indicates the average of last 100 year and clearly this June is where they have seen the highest level of rainfall, right? So this is a quite interesting and uh, uh, you know good uh, visualization that will look good for the eye when somebody you know view it very first time. However, however, you will have to do a bit of a work to uh, to interpret this. All right, let me move on to the next visualization, which is the world we know, and this is about you know our uh, ecosystem. Like in the sky, you have. Uh, giants you have uh, sun and main sequence dwarf so what it is is basically while it is refreshing let me just take a minute okay it took another five seconds so that's why i paused it so what's basically going on over here is you have different lines like super giants giants here you have the sun main sequence white dwarf so what's basically going on so for this uh, we need to expand the we need to expand this chart as you can see I'm just expanding it so there are many different star catalogs which have been produced for various purposes over the years starting from the ancient time so this is where you know this diagram is created around 1910 the ooh, heard sprung if I am pronouncing it correctly and Russell diagram shows relationship between a star's absolute magnitude right 
that is the brightness and its color temperature so it can be used in a chart of a life cycle of a uh, star right so on the diagram stars are ranked from bottom to top in order of decreasing of magnitude that means increasing the brightness right so uh, on the diagram stars are ranked from and uh, from right to left right from right to left uh, by increasing temperature right so from right this side to left as increasing temperature okay uh, this is a quick section about the knowledge but this is where you know the section is written like what is super giant right what is giant so here is a super giant which is this is a subclass of a giant star with even larger red eye and brightness for their masses and temperature so this is some for someone who is knowledgeable or uh, into the field of this astronomy if i'm not wrong that's what it is called right so this is where you study the stars and uh, you study their behavior and uh, all of these different properties which is there but again you know which i really like from a visualization perspective like how the four different sections have been presented the information on the left hand side um, for a user to consume but again it requires a bit of a knowledge if if you are interested in this domain right like it was there here on the medar day when we talked about the rain related uh, environmental factor so third one is the temperature anomaly difference and uh, this is created by Rachel C so this is the temperature anomaly difference for Australia it is a voted visualization what it is is basically the monthly mean temperature in degree Celsius anomaly for Australia very important this point because you have Fahrenheit and you have Celsius in which you can measure the temperature so anomaly for uh, Australia 1910 to 2021 right so over here you have a way where you can select how many lines you want to show so 2021 is what I uh, accidentally selected but if I select only 1915 only uh, these four or five lines will basically going to come which you can see each point is indicating a different month right and if you hover over this is 1910 then 1913 1950 11 1914 indicating a you know higher temperature over here so anomalies in mean surface temperature uh, which you have in different years anomalies are them are the departures from 1961 to 1990 standard deviation standard averaging period so if you are into this field where you are studying the mean temperature then this type of a visualization is really helpful right where you can select like how many points you want and accordingly the visualization will indicate um, the the first of all what is the maximum period that is selected 1917 clearly standing out as where you know the temperature was quite less compared to over here 1932 right 1915 1928 in different months when the temperature was really high so something very useful where you have so many with so many points to visualize but still you want to do a bit of a comparative study in terms of how the temperature was over this uh, almost like a century right yeah more than a century starting from 1910 going all the way till 2021 so very very useful what i feel uh, if you are studying the temperature let's move on to the next visualization which is turned waste into a profit and uh, this is where they are indicating the uh, waste management or how they you can turn the waste into a profit by studying what is happening in the west java which they have highlighted over here in green right so over here in west java you have 2.10 million tons of waste uh, that was in 2021 right and this visualization as you can see is created in bit of um, journalism sort of a format where a lot of context has been given uh, with the help of the text for this visualization and the different points was evaluated like total volume of waste average total waste production and waste services the region with the most waste production right and down below the number of waste banks distributed in west java 
So all of this, you know, you can see a lot of even images have been used, some quotes have been used, which, you know, you will usually see in sort of a journalism sort of article, right? And even you will see the look and feel is also the same when, when the logo is present over here. And down below, the very important, you know, uh, an action, a call to action, which is let's register yourself in Waste Bank, right? So a click over here will take you to the website where, you know, you have these five steps uh, that you can follow, which is uh, for, uh, you know, enrolling yourself in the Waste Bank. So this is, these are the five steps that have been suggested over here and a call to action. So very, very interesting, you know, journalism sort of uh, visualization where at the end you have the uh, call to action. Also over here you can see the information, the references from where all of this information is taken. If you click over here, you will see the information about the various data sources that is being taken. If you click again, this will move away. You can choose the two different languages right from here and get the most out of it. Also created by one of my very favorite author, Gandis Goldstein. You can uh, look at her profile. I will put all the link of all of these dashboards uh, down below into the description. That way you can look into this dashboard and by clicking over here, you will see all the visualization created by Candice. So that way you can get more and more inspirations for different type of project that you are handling. Well, finally, the visualization, which is another very interesting visualization because it is in the form of questions and answers. So as you can see, India Water Portal, how much do you know about water in India? So before I start, uh, it is created by Johanna, again, one of the voted uh, visualization. And like I said earlier, you can come over here based on the link I am providing in the description for this visualization, the fifth visualization, and you can even explore this. You can even click on the Johanna's profile and get more inspirations uh, from her. So that's where. So let's start. How much do you know about water in India? If you click on let's start, right? Let me just click it again because I think I did not refresh it. Uh, let me expand this so that you can clearly see. In 2010, the majority of India water used in India source from. So you remember, right? Back in the day, school days, fill in the blanks. So in India source from ground, that means wells, bore wells, similar extraction mechanism or surface, right? So I'll click on ground. So click on click to proceed to see the result. You are correct. Over the years, India, water in India has been increasingly sourced from ground. And this is what 1960, 1970, 40%, 1980, 50%. And now in 2010, you have 65%. Is this alarming? Let's go and figure it out, right? So number of well increased, but the increase in shallow and medium wells is slowing down. Wells are dug even deeper, signifying how water is getting dif more difficult to extract from ground. So yes, the situation is going going concerning, and this is how shallow tube wells and medium tube wells trend, and the trend for the deep tube wells is increasing. If you see, you can move ahead. Now the next question: Which of these countries is the largest extractor of groundwater? Um, let me select USA, right, and see what is happening so turns out it's different than what you thought india takes the lead extracting 250 km kilometer per cube of groundwater per year more than double that the amount of extracted in usa so very interesting operation where is the india where is usa where is china similar but india is consuming more right from the groundwater almost double wait what so again, you can keep exploring. Water availability has decreased sustainability substantially over time and groundwater has become an alternative to polluted surface bodies. So again, next question. So I will not go to all the question. However, feel free to explore. This is more engaging, I believe. You know, you ask the question, uh, that means user have the inquisitiveness um and uh and then you can keep exploring this so i really like this and i thought this design will going to help you even producing your own visualization well with that thank you so much link for all of these visualization is present in the description and don't forget like if 
I am providing the advanced Tableau dashboard development training where I cover similar type of topics, similar type of dashboards, right? And, uh, and help you learn, understand how you can create it from scratch. With that, thank you so much and I will meet you in the next video with a new topic.